hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, the assembly of the Incra iBox finger jointing jig. Now some time ago I played around with making my own finger jointing jig and while it was uh, an acceptable product, it really had its problems and it had its uh, issues and let's just say it was like a temperamental child and uh, I didn't really have that great of an experience with it. So my 50th birthday just passed and I got this for my birthday from my mom and uh, thanks mom. And uh, what I'm going to do with you guys today is we're going to open this up and put it together and uh, go from there. Now having never used one and never um, owned one, I really don't know what to expect. So um, I'm not a fan of unboxing videos as some of you know, so I'm not going to go through all this. I will go through the assembly. Uh, I will just say just from the initial look here, it looks like everything is well packed and well put together in here, well protected. Um, so. I'm not going to mess around too much with unboxing this and boring the crap out of you guys. Let's get, uh, let's get all this stuff out of the box and get right to the assembly of it. We've removed the main fence out of the box and this is our first step for the setup. And what we need to do is get this little set screw here lined up in the middle of these lines here. There's some white scribe lines and all you want to do is you want to loosen this set knob here and then turn the silver dial on this side until it lines up with the middle of those scribed lines. And once you get it lined up and set into place, that is step one of the assembly finished. The next thing that you want to do for the initial setup while this set knob here is loosened is you want to turn the red knob until these two fingers here are together. You can see that they're not together at the moment. So we will rotate that red knob until we get those two fingers to be tightly together. Just like that. Well, once you're done that and you've got those pins set, the next thing you want to do is install your weapon of choice in your table saw. And for me, I'm going to be using a dado blade set to the quarter inch configuration. And basically what that means is you're going to have just your outer blades on your um, dado blade set. Now with this jig, it doesn't matter what thickness of blade you have in here. Uh, the jig is going to work one way or the other. So get your dado blade installed and then we'll move on to setting the bar for in your miter slot. If you're not sure how to install a dado blade for the record, um, there is a show on the channel here that you can search and uh, I show you how to install a dado blade. It's uh, for those of you that aren't sure, no problem, go check out that show. All right, so now we've got that blade installed. Let's get our bar for our miter slot. Now for those of you who have never used an INCRA device or miter fence or what have you, what they have is these little discs here. They're like, um, they're like a plastic disc that goes in with a set screw which is uh, set into the bar. And you can see this is rather sloppy and loose at the moment. Well, what you do is you place the Allen key that they provide you into this hole and you can tighten those rings. And those rings, by tightening them now, you are in essence shimming it out so that it will fit properly. So what you want to do is you want to adjust this now until you get a good tight fit. Once you get it all comfortable and tight in there, then you can move on to the next step. Well, for my liking now, we have that sliding smoothly. There is no 
gap there. It's not wiggling back and forth either at the front or at the back. It's a nice, clean, tight fit, and I'm happy with that. We can move on to the next step. But for my liking as well, I will be taking these bolts out and putting a little anti-seize compound on them because I know how things work in the shop and over time that can be uh, problematic. Um, I also think that at this point in time, although this plate right here is squared at the factory, I think I'm going to be putting a square on that and checking it and just make sure for my own liking that it is indeed square. And we'll just pop this out and have a look here. You know, as far as I'm concerned, from my liking, this is not square. It's, uh, it's definitely got a bit of an angle to it. It is leaning towards this side. So in order to square that up now, we just loosen off these two black bolts that are here and we can square it up. And I'm gonna off camera take the time to do that and do it properly because as I've said before, this is now the basis of, of your work. When making a jig or a template, every imperfection from the beginning stages will carry on through the rest of your project. And if this plate is not square, neither will the cuts be on your boxes for your finger joints. So let's get that plate perfectly squared up, take the time to do it right, and then we can move on. So with this thing here on the bench, I have checked it repeatedly with several trusted squares in my shop. Um, just to ensure that this plate is 100% square and 90 degrees to this miter slot bar. Now I've checked it, double checked it, triple checked it. I mean, I can't check it anymore. It is as perfect as it is going to be. And I've also placed anti-seize on all four of these bolts so that for later uh, adjustments, if they need be, I can get them out should I have to make those adjustments, say, a year down the road. These discs that are in here, they actually end up getting worn, those nylon discs. And over time, although you can rotate them and reuse them several times, they do end up having to be replaced. So it's a good idea to get some anti-seize on those bolts so that when it comes time to replace them, you're not fighting with it or stripping out these little Allen screws. Now that we have that all squared up, we can place our miter bar into our miter slot. And let me just point out that if your saw tilts to the left, then you want to use the left side of the track. If your saw tilts to the right, then you want to use the right track. Mine tilts to the left, so we're going to use the left track. And what you want to do is you want to place your eye box assembly now over top of your squared up jig here. And if, again, if you're using a left tilting, then this red knob will be on the left side. If you're using a right tilting, then your knob will be on the right side. So for me, left tilting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the mounting screws for this. I'm gonna apply a little anti-seize and you just wanna place the two bolts in that holds this to the assembly, but don't tighten it down because we have a little bit of adjustment to do. We have the two mounting screws in and you want to slide your miter fence so that this dado blade that you've installed will go into this tall groove here. Not this one down here, but this tall one. So we're gonna raise it up about a half an inch and just make sure that it clears there of everything, and it does. And then at this point in time now, you need to adjust the guide fingers. Now that you have it in there, what you want to do is you want to just gently, let me just rotate this here so you can see a little better. You want to gently slide this over until that set bar is just touching, like just barely touching that that bar there, that set bar of the jig. 
and we just you just want to what they call kiss it it's just barely touching and we need to go a little more and I'm pretty happy with that the way that that's just kissing it and once you get that done make sure that your assembly is flat against the bar that we just squared up and once you get it there tighten down these two cap screws that hold the entire uh, eye box down onto your miter bar. The next thing we want to do is install these stock ledges that go on the front of the jig and you'll see that it comes with four of these Phillips head screws and some of these square uh, nuts with kind of like a T-nut for your jigs and fixtures. And you just want to place your Phillips head screws down through the countersunk holes and place these T-nuts on top of those or onto those bolts that you're sticking through. Once you get those in place, um, if you don't have 10 fingers like me and are having, sorry, 10 thumbs, I can't even talk right. I'm having issues with this one and it's all me, I guarantee you that. There we go. Okay, so once you get that in place now, you wanna take these stock fences and you wanna slide them in place and you, once you get them lined up and uh, ready to go in here, just like that, you want to line them up with the edges of the wide slot here. So not the one that we put the blade in just now to uh, align with the edges of the pins or to kiss the blade with the other one, the large one. And just give it a little tighten. You don't need to crank it. So place your... Uh, stock ledges on both sides of the jig, the left and the right, and then um, we can move on from there to checking a few other things with the jig. Well, it now comes time to install the blade guards. And you can see that from the top, they look identical. However, on the bottom, they are complete opposites. So you need to make sure that you're putting the right one on the right side. So what you wanna do for this is take your eye box and flip it completely upside down, just like that. And you just want to make sure, look at your pieces and make sure that when you put these things on here, that the tall recess here, right here, this tall one, this is the one that you're going to want to line up with the tall recess of your eye box. And the same with the other side. When you look at it, the tall or deep recess here is going to match up with the deep recess in the, in the eye box. So make sure that you've got them aligned properly and then you can flip this thing over and we can start mounting these blade guards. Well, now that we have identified which one goes where because these slots and these miters will mimic the ones that we have here, we can now mount them. And the way that we mount those is we place one of these hex head um, quarter 20 bolts into the slot on both the front and the rear here, just like that. And once we get them in place, you just want to slide our blade guards down over the bolts as such. And same with the one at the back, just like that. And then from there, it's just a quarter inch washer. And then they give you these little thumb screws here, as they call them, uh, to tighten them down. I call them jig knobs, thumb screws, jig knobs, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know what I'm talking about. You can see here what I'm talking about. And now that you have those in place, this is fully adjustable side to side like that. And then you can tighten it down for where you need it. 
So do that with both of your blade guards here and then uh, we can get them tightened into place. The next step is to install the sacrificial backer board and uh, this is a replaceable part that you make your own. They give you the dimensions and they do provide you with one and what this is essentially is a backer board to help with any tear out from your blade when making finger joints. So what you want to do with this is in the top holes of the board you want to place another one of these uh, little quarter 20 countersink um, screws, bolts, and use one of the flat washers and you basically want to just slide it in here, line it up along the track and once you get it lined up just tighten it into place and like I said that thing is sacrificial so don't worry too much about it it's going to end up getting cut up the next thing you want to install is this plexi blade guard and it comes with a protective coating and uh, i dread the protective coatings because they always seem to leave some kind of film or residue but this one actually came off nice and clean there you go color me shocked so we're going to install this with the provided number eight screws and the flat washer. I don't think it's rocket science here, guys. The holes are already drilled for you, depending on which side of the jig you are using. And you basically screw this thing in place until it's snug. It's plexiglass though, so please don't crank on it. If you crank that down, you will break it. I guarantee you, you'll crack it apart. So just, just until it's snug, you don't have to reef on it. So just snug that up in there. And there you have it. The Incra Eye Boxed Finger Joint Jig. Uh, now guys, this is an assembly video and only an assembly video. And the whole reason for that is there are folks out there, like myself, who would be looking to purchase this jig, but don't know what to expect as far as assembly or what comes in the box and that sort of thing. And for that, this video is for them. Um, if you're looking for how to use the jig and uh, a demonstration of it, that is going to come on next week's show. Um, and hopefully you will join me for that and enjoy it. The problem is, is that the assembly takes so little time, but of course the actual workings of the jig and, and showing you how to use it and demonstrating and that sort of thing takes a longer time. The show would be far too long if I put the two of them together. So because of that, short show this week, demonstration show next week. And I hope you're actually going to join me next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.